Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share 11 of my favorite Cricut Design Space tips and hacks. Let's get started. So here is Cricut tip number one. Most of the time when I'm working with a file, I'll have a lot of different layers and it can get really crazy to work with. So I make really good use of the grouping function that's available in Cricut Design Space. So as an example here, if I'm working with this SVG file and I have all these different layers and let's say that this didn't quite fit the board that I was going to stick this on, then what I could do is highlight the layers that I do want to section off. And when I do that, you'll notice on the panel here that those layers are now selected and highlighted in the green. Then I would go ahead and click on this group icon. And now this is in one group. I can also then double click on that and rename it. So it's easier to identify. So let's call this Reindeer snack. And now when I click on that grouping, the whole thing will move with it. So I don't have to worry about um, my arrow being off centered or my letters being off centered. I can just grab that and drag that across the board. For tip and hack number two, we are going to talk about erasing things in our design that we don't want. So I'm going to show you three different ways that we can do this. The first way we can do this is uh, using our contour tool. So I've uploaded this into Cricut Design Space and this is how the PNG image came. So let's say I wanted to remove some stuff from it. Let's say I didn't like the hearts on the sides here. So I can select that layer and there's a contour option at the very bottom here. I'm gonna click on that. And you can see that there's all these different sections now with contour. So I'm just gonna uncheck the two hearts here. And you can already see in the back here that's already disappeared from our design. So there we go, we have our hearts removed from our design. So that's the first way we can try to remove elements from our design. The second way is by trying to erase it using the slice function. So what we can do is go to our shapes panel and grab a shape that we think might work to remove this. I'm gonna try use this rounded shape here and I'm going to just shrink that over and make sure it's covered, but not covering anything else that we wanna keep. Then I'm gonna grab those two layers and I'm going to slice. Now, if I delete all of these layers, you'll see that I can, you'll see that I can remove that heart. And then I would do the same thing to the other side. Let's see, this isn't perfect because you can see that I left a little bit of a remnant there because I didn't notice that it wasn't fully on top of it. So this is not the best way, but sometimes you don't have a choice just based on how the contour um, shows the different areas. Now, the best way to do this is when you first upload your design into Cricut Design Space. And here you can actually erase parts of the design that you don't want. So this is the easiest way and in my opinion, the most accurate way because then you can make it bigger as well. You can zoom in and you can carefully erase all the different parts that you don't like and also adjust your eraser size here. And it's just a far more accurate way to do it. So moving on to number three is a trick using our draw function. Sometimes when you're working with images, you'll have something you'll wanna cut out. So for example, let's say I wanted to cut this picture in a circle shape. So I would go ahead and I would grab my circle shape, but the problem is is that when you put it on top, you can't really see what your image is going to look like when you cut out the circle. So I could try to drag this on top, but then you'll notice it just tucks it behind the image and you just can't see where your circle is. So I'm gonna drag that above my image again, and I'm going to go to my operation and change this to a draw function. So it doesn't really matter which one you select, but when you do that, you'll notice that now the inside is transparent and you can still see this outer circle. So you can now position your image and center it how you would like. And this is really great when you plan on doing any cutouts.
There we go. Okay, so going on to tip number four. You'll notice that every time you work on a project, there'll be a grid on the back of your canvas here. You can go into your settings and change that over here from full grid to a partial grid to no grid. And you can also change your units here if you prefer metric over imperial. But a quicker way to do that is actually to click on this little empty square here and above both rulers. So if you click on that, it'll toggle between the three very quickly. And having the blank canvas is great for taking screenshots. So you can send that to your friends. They can edit the screenshot you send them and make their own SVG from it. And while we're in here, I will also show you tip number five, which is changing your canvas color. So the back right now is white, but did you know that you can actually change it? And I find this very helpful. If you're working on something like making a dark t-shirt, then it's a little bit easier to visualize your color contrast between the material that you're using to put your vinyl or HTV on. So in order to change our canvas, we can go and click on blank canvas at the bottom here. And you'll see that everything's basically grayed out except for the small little color option here. So if you click on that, you can now change the background. And you can see now that that's black, which again is a better contrast to show you um, the difference between the design you're making and what you're going to be putting it on. Okay, moving on to tip number six. So sometimes when you're working, you'll want to change the size of things. But let's say I had this, this rectangle that I want to use to create a banner behind my words. But if I drag this, it only makes it super large and I don't want it this tall. So that's where adjusting your boundary box comes in. So up here under size, if you click on this little lock button, it will unlock that and you can now change your proportions to make your design fit. And this is also great for working with letters as well if you wanted to skew the design. For tip number seven is finding the information of your elements. Now, let's say you've been working on this file for a while. So I've gone ahead, I've cut out this, this word from this circle. I've added all these elements onto it. And now I've forgotten which font I used. So if you actually go to that layer and scroll to the very, very bottom, there is an image info option here. And when you highlight over that, you'll see everything here. So you'll see the font that was used. You'll even see the images that were used, whether you uploaded them or if they were from the images tab within Cricut Design Space. All right, so moving on to tip number eight. Sometimes when you're working with certain fonts, they can be really, really thin and difficult to weed. So a quick trick is that you can thicken the fonts by using the offset function. So if you select your font and go to offset, you can do something really, really thin. And that'll thicken the font. So it'll make it easier to weed when you cut it out. There are also other tricks when you're actually weeding that make it easier to weed, but we'll cover that in another video. Tip and hack number nine. This is probably my favorite function in Cricut Design Space, and it is the align tool. Let me show you how I use it. So let's say I'm making a checklist and I wanna add all these lines. So normally when you copy and paste, you'll notice it pastes it kind of in a random spot and it's not aligned um, to the, anything else on your design. So what I'll do is I'll actually just copy and paste many a times. And then I will grab all those lines. I'll move them down because I want to place them where they belong. And then I'll put one line where I want things. So I want this aligned to my to do and I'll place another line at the very bottom, you're just kind of gauging how far down you want to go. And now when you select all, so you can do that by control A or you can click select all here. You can use the align function to align left. And now everything is aligned to the left. 
and you can use it to distribute vertically. And that literally leaves a space between each line that's equidistant. And now I have a perfectly lined to-do list. And I use this for so many things, to align objects together, to create calendars, so many ways you can use the align and distribute function. Tip number 10. When you're working with a lot of pieces on design or with a lot of colors, sometimes you want to switch the color around or you want to match a color. So let's say, for example, I changed my mind with this banner and I want the entire word happy to be in this pink and this entire word Easter in a blue. So I could click on every single letter and then try to find the color that I used. But if you use a custom color, it makes it even more difficult to find your color. Though you can select it here, but an easier way is actually to use the color sync panel. So if I go to the color sync panel, I can then grab each of these letters and start shifting them around. So I can just drag that down. And you can see that I just dragged it to the pink and, and it changed it all to pink for me. And then I can do the same thing to the blue and I'm done. And it's a nice, easy visual way to see all your different layers and what colors they are. You can also grab the hexadecimal color number here, which I find very helpful sometimes as well. And for our final tip, did you know that you can cut multiples of a design without having to copy and paste it over and over and over again? All you have to do is go to make it and on the screen you can just adjust the number of copies you're going to have and when you hit apply it'll automatically place all of them on your mat size that you select and while you're on the screen you can also move around your elements if you find that sometimes Cricut it looks like it's wasting too much space. So I just like to click on it and move things around to save some vinyl. And there you have it, 11 of the best Cricut Design Space tips and tricks. Which one was your favorite? If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember, and remember to subscribe. Until next time, guys. Bye.